Hey folks, Paul Abernathy here. On today's lesson, we're going to learn how to take a white conductor or even a gray conductor inside of a cable assembly and use it as an ungrounded hot conductor. Okay, we're gonna do that in today's lesson. All of this is available in our Fast Tracks program. If you're interested in getting in depth into the National Electrical Code, check out our program. We teach you what you need to know about the National Electrical Code. Okay, let's go on and get into today's little lesson. Here's what we're talking about, folks. Uh, now, this is in our unit four of our program, and it's 4 2C, and it's talking about the white conductor being used as an ungrounded hot conductor. Okay, when you can do it in switch legs, or when you can use it in switch loops, uh, when you can use it from device to device, let's say in a three way or a four way circuit, that's what we're talking about. Now, remember, you can't take a white conductor in a raceway and re-identify it, okay? But you do have some allowances in Article 200 for re-identifying a white or gray conductor to be used as a hot conductor inside of a cable assembly. Now, the reason for that is the cable assembly is already pre-made. So it is not subject to somebody changing it out in the field. It is already made up as a cable assembly. So these unique provisions will allow you to be very flexible with that cable assembly in being able to re-identify the white conductor as a hot conductor. All right, but I'm gonna show you some examples of that. So as you can see right here on the screen, we have these callouts. See, you see A, you see B, you see D, C, E, and all that. And all this is gonna be key with our illustrations, right? So as you see the illustrations, all of this is, is so key in our program. Um, so remember though, as a student, you have the ability to increase the size of the text, you have bookmark features, and you can print any page you want. So just remember that as a student. All right, let's kind of go back and look at what we're talking about here. All right, so we're talking about the white conductor and re-identifying it and be able to use it. So let's look at each one of these and then we'll look at the code as well to kind of match up these things. So you kind of hammer this stuff home. All right, the very first one is A. And A says, a cable assembly's white or gray conductor can be used as a switch loop or leg in single pole, three-way and four-way switch installations, even though it is an ungrounded hot conductor when we do this re-identification. So we'll, we'll highlight that and uh, make that stand out. Now, here's the first thing I wanna tell you in our program. You see these chevrons right here? And I'll do this as a different color. When you see a chevron, you wanna stop and you wanna go look at the National Electrical Code. Why? Because what we're trying to do is get you used to looking at the, the material and then shifting to the code, back to the material. This kind of trains you to be fluent in working through the National Electrical Code. So this is very relevant because there are occasions where you want to run just a 14.2 or 12.2, let's say, from a switch down to a switch receptacle, and I only want to run two conductors with an equipment ground, and I want to use that white as to send the power down, and then I want to use what? I want to use the black to bring it back, that type of thing. So um, it's real important. Now, it's very critical when you do this where the source of the power is. So for this to even work, the power would be at the receptacle, sending it up to or down, depending on where it's at, to the switch, and then you're coming back, that type of thing. Make sense? So don't worry, I'll explain all of that as we get into what it looks like and, and all those nuances in that. So let's kind of go to the code real quick and look at 200.7C1. What gives us permission to, to do this? All right, so I'll go to the code. And so here we are at 200.7. In our case, we were looking for the C right here. So it's a circuit of 50 volts or more, it is. And here's the C1 right here. And it says, if part of the cable assembly that has the insulation permanently re-identified to indicate its use as an ungrounded conductor by marking tape, paint, or other effective means, at its termination and at each location where the conductor is visible, say in junction boxes as well, uh, and accessible. It says the identification shall encircle the insulation and shall be of a color other than white, gray, or green. 
Now, it also says if used as a single pole, three-way or four-way switch loop, it says the re-identified conductor with white or gray insulation or three continuous white or gray stripes. So you could use like a black with three white stripes or three gray stripes. Um, but as long as we re-identify it, and it's only re-identified when it is used from the supply to the switch, not from where it goes from the switch back to the load, like the luminaire, or where it goes from the switch back to the device. That's not when we can re-identify it. That would have to stay black or red or blue. It could not be a white or a gray re-identified, okay? I'll show you what that means uh, when we go back and look at it. But that's what the code says, okay? So that's the first one that we're looking at. So let's get back to the code or back to the lesson. So that's what we're talking So that's A. So all of that, we're going to cover in A, B, C, and D, but that kind of sets the tone here. So here's A. And so here's that re-identifying of the white. Now, you notice the source is not here at the switch. The source is down here at the receptacle. So this is a switched receptacle. So source of the power comes in, branch circuit, and then it changes over. That white is being re-identified, and it's sending it to the device, not back to the load, but to the device. That is okay. So this could be just a simple a 14.2 with a ground, okay? All right, so the other interesting thing is, notice how this is entirely re-identified. You only have to encircle it at the termination. So you don't have to do the whole conductor if you want. Um, that's a design thing. That's if you wanna enwrap the whole thing, that's, that's totally up to you, but it's not required. You just have to encircle it. And this has to be re-identified at all accessible points uh, and at all terminations for between those conductors that's being re-identified. Okay. So in this case, it's just going straight from the device, uh, the receptacle device, up to the switch. So again, both places are accessible, and both places in this case are re-identified. So now let's move on. So we verified that here. So we're going to get rid of this highlight so we don't have any confusion. Uh, another important thing in our program, folks, again, is these, these chevrons. Always stop. Go into your code book like we did read it, and then come back. And then things start to make even more sense. All right, let's look at B. All right, so B is calling out. It says the white or gray conductor's new use as an ungrounded hot conductor, that means after we've re-identified it, must be permanently re-identified by marking tape, paint, or other effective means. Y'all saw that when we looked at the code a second ago, okay? And it says at its terminations and at each location where the conductor is visible and accessible. We've already covered that. And again, it says the identification shall encircle the insulation and shall be of a color other than white, gray, or green. That should be a no-brainer. And we read that. That was also covered in 207C1. So we're good to go there. All right. Now we're going to see that. That's B. So all that is doing is right here reminding you about the re-identification. Again, you don't have to wrap the entire conductor. All right. It doesn't say the entire. It says encircle it. it doesn't say the whole conductor. But if you want to do that, or if that's your practice, that's, that's perfectly fine. Next is C. Now, C just is reiterating what we used in our example here was you see that we used red tape. A lot of people think that's got to be black tape, but it could be blue tape, uh, red tape, okay, to do that re-identification if you want to use tape. Paint is okay too, but you got to make sure it's not detrimental or adverse to the insulation. It's not going to harm the insulation. Okay. Water-based paints probably will not. Oil-based could cause an issue. But again, uh, just be aware that tape is an option that most people will utilize. Now, here's D. Now, D says the white or gray conductor can be used to feed the switch or can be the travelers in the three-way or four-way switch installation. Okay, The white or gray conductor that you re-identified shall not be used to return back to the switch or to, uh, say, a lighting outlet as well. That's an important thing to remember, folks. Again, we saw that when we read this, okay? So what it's saying here is this. So it's calling out D, and you'll notice D right here. So notice that the source is down here, and it's sending it to the switch. But when it's coming back to the load, in this case, an outlet, I mean, a, a receptacle device in an outlet box, you'll notice that that is the black. It's not the re-identified conductor. 
important. Now, this would also be the same whether or not you were dealing with lighting as well. So if I have a, a, a switch and I'm coming into the, loom, the lighting outlet box and I'm dropping it down to, say, a switch, okay, that would be the switch leg or the switch loop. Okay, as long as I'm taking it, the power down to the device, I'm okay to re-identify. But I can't re-identify and use the white that's going back to the lighting outlet. You get what I'm saying? So for travelers, it's okay to re-identify because you're going from device, a switch device to switch device. Uh, but when you're going back to the lighting outlet or the receptacle outlet box where the receptacle device is, then that's back to the load then you can't use the re-identified white or gray conductor for that application. You're gonna use the black or red or blue. You get me? Okay, this example we're showing just happens to be a switched receptacle application. All right, so there you go. That's all the rules that you have under D. And we've, we've looked at that. Now let's look at E. Now E is unique because E is saying, you know what? The grounded conductor is not required to be at this switch location. Have you all heard this, what's changed through the code? Is that every switch location has to have a grounded neutral conductor there? Well, you don't, when it comes to a situation like this, where you're simply doing a switch leg or switch loop up to or down to a switch itself, when you're doing a switched receptacle. Now, where do we get this allowance? Okay, you saw what it said in the code, and that's why we always want to go look at the code. 404.2C4, that's where it says. So we're going to go into the code. Give me a second. I will get us there. And we can look, we can look that up here, okay? So the reference is 404.2C4. So let's go on and go there. So here we are, see, and here's the four right here. It says, now again, Switches controlling lighting outlets. Now, typically, you're going to have a grounded conductor at all these switch locations. But in here, you have some caveats, okay, where you can say, you know what, there are certain locations where you don't have to have that grounded conductor, okay, at that switch location, all right? And there's four of them here that give you four numbers here, all right? So the one we're looking at is right here. And it says... Right here it says, a grounded conductor shall not be required to be installed at lighting switch locations under any of the following conditions. All right, and here, this is the one we're looking at. It says where the switch controls a receptacle load. Then it's not necessary for you to have the, uh, the grounded conductor there at the switch location. Right? And that kind of illustrates the picture that we have. Now, there's other caveats in here. We're not going to cover these in this lesson because all we're talking about is re-identifying of the conductor, the white or gray conductor inside of a cable assembly. This is for a whole different lesson, uh, it, which we obviously will cover in our series. But that just wanted to reiterate this application right here. Now, remember... 404.2C is going to be about having a grounded conductor at all switch locations. This is just an application where you do not have to have a grounded conductor at this switch location if it's switching a receptacle, okay? That's the, the lesson that we have for today. So hopefully you got something out of that, um, that you can uh, re-identify the white or gray or any color other than green with three white or gray stripes in a cable assembly, as long as you're going to a switching device, okay, and not back to the load. So in other words, your return path back to the load. So if it was a three-way circuit, let's say, and you had the load at the luminaire, and you're dropping down to a three-way switch, the travelers to the other three-way switch, you could use the white to re-identify. But the point that it comes back to go up to the load you could not re-identify and use a white or gray for that. It has to be a color like black, blue, um, any other color other than a re-identified white or gray conductor, that type of thing. Make sense? All right, so that's kind of what we covered in this lesson. Hopefully you got something out of that. So yes, you can re-identify a white or gray or any color other than green with three white or gray stripes in a cable assembly as long as you're supplying the switching devices and you're not going back to the load. So it's kind of one-way street when you're doing that. All right? 
Hopefully you got something out of that, folks. We'll see you in the next lesson.